A warm welcome young doctors. This time we are going to discuss about nephrotic syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome is a kidney disease featured by massive proteinuria, hypoalbuminemia, edema and hyperlipidemia. It is due to injury to the podocytes in the glomeruli. The main feature is heavy proteinuria which is more than 1 gram per meter square per day and it causes a much reduction in the protein in the body. And now let's see the classification of the glomerular diseases and we have to see where this nephrotic syndrome lies in the classification. The first type is the nephrotic syndrome presentation and in there the first one is the minimal change nephropathy and this minimal change nephropathy is the typical nephrotic syndrome and here the problem is reversible dysfunction of the podocytes and the treatment is high dose glucocorticoids. Second one is the focal segmental glomerulosclerosis FSGS and there we have got two subtypes primary and secondary and primary is where the cause is unknown and secondary is due to chronic hypertension HIV etc and here this may progress to chronic kidney disease and the lesion when we are looking is sclerosis of the podocytes. And the third one is the membranous nephropathy and it is due to immunoglobulin G, IgG against the podocytes which are autoantibodies. And that's the nephrotic syndrome presentation and the second one is the mild glomerulonephritic presentation. Here the subtypes are IgA nephropathy, henex lean purpura and this IgA nephropathy there is a feature of crescent formation, treatment is again high dose glucocorticoids. And the second one is henex lean purpura which is a systemic vasculitis and that we have discussed in the previous video. And here there is mesangial IgA immunoglobulin A deposition and it is also known as mesangiocapillary glomerular nephritis. And the third one is rapidly progressive glomerular nephritic presentation RPGN presentation. There are three subtypes infection related or diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis there comes the typical acute glomerulonephritis that is the PSGN post streptococcal glomerulonephritis the second one is anti GBM disease anti glomerular basement membrane disease third one is the focal necrotizing glomerulonephritis and this is the general classification of the glomerular diseases given in the Davidson textbook of medicine Let's look out the details of the nephrotic syndrome. Initially the pathogenesis or the pathophysiology. There is heavy proteinuria that we have discussed before and this heavy proteinuria causes hypoalbuminemia which means reduced or low levels of albumin in the blood and this reduced albumin levels will reduce the plasma oncotic pressure and and this hypoalbuminemia that is the reduced levels of albumin in the body stimulates the hepatic synthesis of beta lipoprotein that is gives a message to the liver to produce more amount of beta lipoproteins. These beta lipoproteins are transporters of the cholesterol so that in turn causes hypercholesterolemia which means high levels of cholesterol in the body or hyperlipidemia and this increases the risk of atherosclerosis. Due to this the plasma will be milky in appearance and hypoalbuminemia I have told you it decreases the plasma oncotic pressure and due to that there is interstitial edema and also it causes hypovolemia and this hypovolemic like situation will stimulate renin angiotensin aldosterone system and it causes the secretion of antidiuretic hormone and these two will cause sodium as well as water retention in the body and this water and sodium retention again worsens this interstitial edema and this is the main pathophysiology of the nephrotic syndrome due to reduced protein in the body there is reduced protein S, protein C and antithrombin levels in the body. It will result in hypercoagulability. It increases the risk of venous thromboembolism. And again this reduced protein levels in the body 
causes hypogamma globulinemia. So this reduced levels of gamma globulin means there is reduced immunity and this results in recurrent infections like pneumococcal meningococcal infections and these are the main features of nephrotic syndrome. Let's look out the other clinical features. Mainly we have seen the edema which are noticed initially around the eyes and then in the legs. Gradually it becomes a generalized edema with ascites, hydrothorax, hydrocel, etc. and it causes reduced urine output. The BP blood pressure is normal but there are high risk of infections. The child will be having a bloated appearance and it is a relative well-being state and this is misleading. After the loss of edema, we will be noticing the severe muscle wasting in the child. More than 90% of this childhood nephrotic syndrome are primary or idiopathic cause. Other causes are amyloidosis, vasculitis, SLE, etc. In children, this nephrotic syndrome will be having two presentations, mainly the minimal change nephrotic syndrome. The other one is significant change nephrotic syndrome. And let's compare them. The minimal lesion nephrotic syndrome and the significant lesion nephrotic syndrome. The minimal lesion is seen mostly around the age group 2 to 6 years, whereas the significant lesion is seen in older children. It is the minimal lesion is more common in boys, whereas the significant lesion is equal in both the sexes. Hematuria is rare in minimal lesion. It is usual in significant lesion. The blood pressure as well as the GFR glomerular filtration rate are normal in minimal lesion, whereas it can be normal in significant lesion but sometimes the blood pressure can be higher in significant one and the GFR can be reduced. In the minimal lesion there is normal glomeruli. There is mild mesangial proliferation with immunoglobulin M deposits whereas in significant lesion there are changes of varying severity and there can be complement 3 and immunoglobulins deposition. The serum C3 complement 3 levels are normal in minimal lesion whereas it is reduced in the glomerulonephritic presentation. The proteinuria are very high in minimal lesion whereas it is low to medium in significant lesion. The steroid treatment will be having more than 95% of effectiveness whereas it is unsatisfactory in glomerulonephritic presentation. This minimal lesion is having a good prognosis whereas the prognosis is variable in significant lesion and this is the general comparison of the minimal and the significant lesion of the nephrotic syndrome. Next, the most important thing, we have to differentiate the nephrotic syndrome with the nephritic syndrome which means the glomerulonephritis. The mechanism is in nephrotic syndrome, there is injury to the porocytes with scarring and matrix deposition in the glomeruli. Whereas in nephrotic syndrome, there is inflammation and there is breakage of the glomerular basement membrane and there is crescent formations. Coming to the clinical features, there is significant proteinuria in the nephrotic syndrome, whereas hematuria is the main point in the nephrotic syndrome. There is hypoalbuminemia in nephrotic syndrome, whereas hypertension is seen most commonly in the nephrotic syndrome. Edema is present in both of them and some other features like hypercholesterolemia, hypercoagulability state, recurrent infections are commonly seen in nephrotic syndrome, whereas oliguria, reduced renal function and history of a previous infection, mostly upper respiratory tract infection or skin infections like pyoderma are commonly seen in nephritic syndrome. And this is the common comparison between them. We have to evaluate some other things too. We have to do a urinalysis for proteinuria, red cells, CAS, etc. We have to check the blood urea level, creatinine levels, albumin, cholesterol levels. Do a complete blood count and do a urine culture if you are suspecting a UTI, perform a tuberculin test 
because tuberculosis is a common disease affecting the kidney. C3 and anti streptolysin or azotitis. Look for hepatitis B surface antigen and also check the ANA titus, anti nuclear antibody titus. Renal biopsy is not required to confirm the diagnosis prior to starting the therapy. With the clinical features and by seeing the child, we can confirm the nephrotic syndrome and start the treatment with the prednisolone or other corticosteroids. The biopsy is recommended in children with atypical features like if the child's age is less than 12 months, if there is a gross hematuria or a persistent microscopic hematuria or if there is low blood complement C3 levels and if there is hypertension with the nephrotic syndrome. Usually hypertension is seen in glomerular nephritic presentation. If there is an impaired renal function and if there is a persisting nephrotic range proteinuria despite appropriate steroid therapy and if these kind of atypical features are seen then we have to do a biopsy. We have to be familiar with some other terms like remission, relapse, frequent relapses etc. Let's look out what is remission. Remission means the urine albumin is nil or trace for three consecutive early morning specimens. What do you mean by relapse? After remission, if the urine albumin is 3 plus or 4 plus for three consecutive early morning specimens, then it is relapse, which means the disease has recurred. And what do you mean by frequent relapses? It means two or more relapses in initial six months or four or more relapses in any of the 12 months. What do you mean by steroid dependence? If there is two consecutive relapses at alternate day steroid therapy or within a 14 days of discontinuation, which means the person or the disease is depending on the steroid. If we are stopping the steroid for 14 days, then the disease recurs. Or if we are giving alternate steroid therapy, then also the disease recurs. And this is the dependence. What do you mean by steroid resistance? Resistance. From the name itself, we can imagine, we can assume that there is resistance to the therapy. The absence of remission despite therapy with daily prednisolone for four weeks and followed by alternate day prednisolone therapy in the next four weeks. The therapy with the prednisolone will be discussed later but just understand this term steroid resistance. In spite of adequate therapy with the prednisolone there is absence of remission. Let's study the management of this nephrotic syndrome. First of all the first episode management. The first episode of nephrotic syndrome has to be treated adequately. It is an important determinant of the long-term course of the disease. What are the treatment modalities? We have to give a high protein diet. Why? Because due to loss of protein from the body, we have to supplement the protein through the diet. Suggest a salt restriction to amount in the usual cooking. No extra salt should be put. If there is any associated infection then treat it and screen for tuberculosis. I have told you that tuberculosis affects almost all organs in our body, mainly the kidneys. So we have to rule out the tuberculosis. If the child is having significant edema then give diuretics. We have to be more cautious while giving diuretics because there is high chance of dehydration, hypovolemia and other complications. Regarding the diuretics, we are giving furosemide 1 to 4 mg per kg per day in two divided doses alone or with aldosterone antagonist or spironolactone 2 to 3 mg per kilogram per day in two divided doses. Lastly, the mainstay of treatment is corticosteroids. Why this corticosteroid? It reduces the proteinuria within a 10 to 14 days and it causes diuresis and it stimulates loss of edema. And which corticoid we have to give? Prednisolone. 
Tritisolon 60 mg per meter square per day, a maximum of 60 mg has to be given for 6 weeks, followed by 40 mg per meter square, maximum of 40 mg single morning dose on alternate days for 6 weeks has to be given. And the treatment with the steroids more than 12 weeks will cause corticosteroid toxicity. And I have told you that this nephrotic syndrome is a disease of frequent remissions and relapses. So we have to be aware about the management of the relapse. If there is a relapse or if the disease is recurring, then we have to give prednisolone 60 mg per meter square per day until the proteinuria is negative or the proteinuria is traced for three consecutive days followed by 40 mg per meter square on alternate days for four weeks and this is the mainstay of relapse management and there are some steroid sparing agents which are other agents used in the treatment of nephrotic syndrome they are cyclophosphamide cyclosporin tacrolimus rituximab methylprednisolone etc and these we are giving in steroid resistant cases. And finally, we have to look at the complications of nephrotic syndrome. The main complications are very severe massive edema. We have to give high doses of furosemide and spironolactone and if not sufficient, we have to give an albumin infusion. Infections and this nephrotic syndrome and the steroid treatment are causing an immunosuppression and diseases or infections like peritonitis, cellulitis, pneumonia and meningitis can occur. And we have to give immunization with pneumococcal and varicella vaccines while the child is off the steroids for around 4 weeks. As there is less amount of the protein and less amount of the protein S, protein C and antithrombin, I have told you that it is a hypercoagulable state and it causes a thrombotic complications most commonly in the renal, pulmonary and cerebral veins and thus we have to give treatment with low molecular weight heparin followed by oral anticoagulants. Next is hypovolemia and acute renal failure. It is seen at severe relapse or very prolonged diuretic therapy. I have told you that we have to give the diuretics more cautiously as it can cause severe diuresis and resulting in hypovolemia and acute renal failure. So stop diuretics and give infusion of normal saline and correct with albumin if needed. And finally there can be steroid toxicity. It causes Cushingnoid features like short stature, hypertension, osteoporosis, subcapsular cataract etc. So here what we have to do stop steroids and use steroid sparing agents like cyclophosphamide, cyclosporine, etc. And this is the end of our topic. Remembering you, set goals that scare you and excite you at the same time. Then only you will be having a good future. And this is your Medical Malu. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe.